All right, guys, here we go. Day two. All right, uh, everybody get out your homework. 9.4, 2 through 18 evens. Remember, during this whole process, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to send me emails. I got lots of emails today, usually about a link uh, or something like that. But, uh, yeah, I can answer emails. Just not going to be, you know, definitely in real time. It's going to be some minutes in between your question and your answer. All right. Hey, Sierra, head up. Come on, let's go. Wake up. All right. Uh, check your work, please. Uh, remember, once we uh, check our work, we're going to go back to the Google Forms, pause the video, and type in for question one how many you got wrong. All right. Uh, numero two. Uh, the answer is six comma negative one. Number four, 37 thirds comma negative four. Number six, seven comma negative two. Number eight, five comma one. Number 10, negative 10 comma 3, number 12, 4 ninths comma negative 3 fifths, number 14, 3 fourths comma 1 fifth, number 16, 300, 300, yeah, just imagine trying to graph that one by hand, uh, and the last one, number 18, negative 20 comma negative 18. All right, count how many you got wrong, go to the Google Forms, pause the video, and then type in in question one how many you got wrong, and then come back to the video. All right, uh, here's our basic calendar. Remember, tomorrow we're just going to do a chapter review. It's a normal chapter review. I'll give you the questions. Uh, I'll just make a video uh, running through every single problem. So you'll do one, then play the video, do one, play the video, so forth and so on. No, no test for Chapter 9. We'll go right into Chapter 10. If everything works out, we'll go into CMAS prep after uh, spring break, and then just uh, keep moving on from there. All right, here's your homework. Please copy it down. Remember... Since it's a video, you can always pause it, rewind it, and then I'll show you the video, um, uh, or I'll show you the homework. It's the last slide. I also put it on the Google Forms as the last question, post what the uh, homework is. All right. Today we're going to do part two of uh, solving systems by elimination. Hope you found that, found that uh, solving by elimination was pretty easy. I know it's, the, it's my favorite technique. All right. Two uh, objectives. Uh, solve a system by, by using something called scalar multiplication. That's the new stuff. And then the second thing is, you know, remember whenever you have a system of, of equations, you always have one, none, or infinite solutions. We're going to take a look at what that would look like uh, for elimination. Those are our two objectives. Quick review from last night's homework. Remember, we're solving by elimination. There's four quick steps. The first thing is to stack the two equations. Now, this fact... Uh, the ones that you would have to subtract is when the uh, coefficients of the variable, either x or y, are exactly the same. Notice the previous one, we had a negative 3 and a positive 3. This time, we have a 2x and a 2x. So when they're the same, we need to not add, we need to subtract. But remember, when we subtract the second equation, all the signs of the second equation, you need to write their opposites because subtraction is the same as adding the opposite of everything. The opposite of 2 is negative 2. The opposite of negative 6 is positive 6. The opposite of negative 8 is positive 8. It doesn't turn everything all negative or positive. It just means everything is the opposite. Okay, so now when we add, we see that the x's get eliminated. We're left with the y's. Therefore, y equals 2. Substitute that back into either equation. I chose the first one. 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract 6 from both sides. Divide by 2. And remember, the, the uh, solution to a system of equation is the point where the two lines intersect, so they intersect at 2, 2. Okay, so there's your quick review. If you want to watch that again a couple times, please do. All right, so the problem that I introduced to you at the last slide yesterday was, well, what happens when, when you stack them? Here's your two equations, both in standard form. When you stack them, neither one, neither the coefficients of the x nor the coefficients of the y are exactly the same. i got a 2 and a 7, a 15 and a 5, right? doesn't matter that one's positive and one's negative. They're not the same. I could add or subtract these all day long. It wouldn't eliminate anything. So here is the new idea. We need a new technique. All right, the new technique, well, let me introduce it to you this way. Imagine you had an equation. Now, it's got to be a true equation. Uh, the technique is called scalar multiplication. We're going to scale the equation up. You got to start with a true equation. That's a true equation. Four plus one equals five. Okay. Um, scalar multiplication means that we take 
everything in the equation and we scale it by some factor. In this case, 2. Basically, I'm doing the distributive property here with a 2. Now, I could also do it with a negative 2. Okay? If I scale this up by a factor of 2, well, the 4 turns into an 8, the 1 turns into a 2, the, two, uh, the 5 turns into 10. In other words, I multiplied everything in that equation by 2. And notice if you start with an equation that's true, you end in an equation that's true as well. Okay? This also works with subtraction, or a negative number, I should say. So if we scale this all by a factor of negative 3, as long as you start with a true equation, you're going to wind up with a true equation. Negative 3 times 4, negative 12. Negative 3 times 1, negative 3. Negative 3 times 5, negative 15. And negative 12 minus 3 is, in fact, negative 15. So this is called scalar multiplication. And it, you can also do this with, with fractions or decimals, but we're going to stick with integers today. Um, well, it turns out that this technique, this thing called scalar multiplication, is what allows us to get around this issue. The issue is that neither the x's nor the y's have the same coefficient. So here's our goal. Our goal is to either the x's or the y's to have exactly the same number. And by the same number, I, what I really mean is one's positive, one's ne negative. And that way, when I add them, one of them goes away. So for those of you who are confused by that, let's match the y coefficients. Notice in the first equation, the coefficient is 15, and the second one is negative 5, not the same number. If I were to, however, multiply the second equation by 3, well, look what I would get. 21x minus 15y equals 51. And now when I add, notice the y's would be eliminated. That's the technique. You're going to multiply one of the equations by a number, so therefore either the x's or the y are opposite of each other. Okay. Notice if I had to try to max the x's there, I would have had to use two scalars, one for the top and one for the bottom. We will use that at the end here, but not, not to start off with. Okay, so let's finish this one up. So if we add both of those equations, 21 minus 2 is 19, uh, 51 minus 32 is 19, okay? So when we solve that particular equation, we get x equals 1. If we go too fast, remember you can always pause, rewind, and play it again. Okay, uh, substitute the 1 into either equation. I'm clearly going to choose the first equation. Let x be 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. I add 2 to both sides and divide by 15. We get y is equal to negative 2. So the point would be 1 comma negative 2. All right, let's see that again. All right, second example. Notice neither the x nor the y's match. Uh, if we were to match the x's, we'd have to multiply both equations by a different scalar. But we could match the y's. So let's match the y's. Match the y's. So let's see, the bottom one is 6, the top one's negative 2. Yeah, if I multiply the top one by 3, then the y's would, and when I say match, I don't literally mean you get the same number. Our goal here is to make one positive, one negative, so that when we add them, they go away. They eliminate each other. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the top one by a scalar of 3, so we get negative 15x minus 6y equals 12. Okay, now when we add negative 15 plus 3, negative 12, Okay, uh, 12 plus 6 is 18. Notice the y's were eliminated. Uh, divide both sides by negative 12. Oof, we get this ugly, ugly, ugly fraction. Okay, however, I mean, the, the actual, till the last step, it wasn't too bad. Uh, negative 3 over 2 is what we need to substitute into either equation. I'll choose the second one. Um, now, notice we could do uh, uh, um, uh, eliminate, the fr uh, eliminate the fraction, right, um, if we wanted to. I uh, multiply everything by a 2 or a negative 2 in that case. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as a fraction. Um, let's see, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, so we get negative 9 over 2. A uh, common denominator would be a 2, so that 6 would be 12 over 2. And we added 9 halves to both sides, 12 and 9 is 21. Okay, now we got to divide both sides by 6, in either, other words, copy dot flip. Uh, we would get 21 over 12, and that reduces to 7 over 4. Now, I did that one really quick. This is a really ugly, ugly, ugly answer right here. But just be just be comfortable with the fact that you understand the process. We'll worry about the ugly numbers as we move on here. So final answer, uh, negative 3 over 2, 7 fourths. Okay? How about we do one together? So write down both of these equations. I already stacked them for you. And let's go to it. Uh, let's see, you want to match the x's or the y's? 
I mean, either one's fine. If we were to match the x's, we'd multiply by a four. If we were to multiply, or if we want to match the the y's, we multiply by a five. I'd always go with a smaller number. So let's multiply the let's match the x's and uh, let's multiply the uh, bottom equation times four. Notice that it's going to give you a positive eight and a negative eight, just what we want. So let's see, that would give us negative eight x plus four y minus equals negative twelve. Okay. All right, uh, one quick note on the notation here. I'm doing this in PowerPoint, so it's really easy for me to just magically change the numbers. You're going you're gonna to need to write these equations twice, right? Uh, I, would, I would highly discourage you to, um, you know, scratch through or erase. Just write the equations twice. All right, let's add. Uh, the x's are eliminated. Uh, the y's just turn into y, to negative y. Negative 5y plus 4y is negative 1y. And 7 minus 12 is negative 5. Multiply or divide both sides by negative. You get y is equal to 5. I'm probably going to choose the first equation. Yep. Uh, let's see. 5 times negative 5, negative 25. Add 25 to both sides. Divide by 8. Therefore, 4 comma 5. Now, remember, I'm talking pretty fast here in these videos. You can always hit the pause button. You can always rewind. Okay? All right, how'd that work out? All right, what I would recommend for those of you that are all over it, you're like, wow, I got this down, just go ahead and go to the next slide. And then for those of you that need to review this, go ahead, rewind the video, watch this one again. Okay, so here's what I need you to do. Uh, in box two, this is going to be question number two uh, in the Google Forms. Go ahead and solve this one by elimination. Uh, use scalar multiplication, and then write your answer in, in uh, uh, box number two, and then come back, play the video, or, or pause the video while you're doing this, obviously, and then come back and check your answer to mine. How'd you do? Uh, Isaiah, what'd you get for an answer? Oh, Eliza, you get the same thing or something else? Uh -huh. All right, well, let's see which one of you is right. All right, here we go. Um, let's see. I'm either going to match the X's or the Y's. The X's look like a big mess. Uh, let's match the Y's. So uh, the top one's negative 3. We want the bottom to be a positive 3. So we're going to multiply the bottom equation times 3. Okay? So let's see. That give me 24X plus 3Y equals negative 6. Once again, I'm using the magic of PowerPoint just to change the numbers. You would need to probably rewrite the equations. All right, let's add. Uh, 24x minus 6x is 18x, uh, negative 12 minus 6, negative 18, therefore you can see x is equal to negative 1. All right, I'm going to take that and throw that negative 1 back into either equation. All right, I'm not sure why I chose the first one because they're all negative here. This is Landon's nightmare right here. They're all negative. Uh, let's, uh, let's see what we get here. Negative 6 times negative 1, positive 6. Subtract 6 from both sides and then divide each side by negative 3, we get y equals 6. Hey, remember when we did these last year and you'd have to see every step and you were like, wait, stop, 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 let me see the step, and now you're doing some of this algebra in your head. All right, let's see. Uh, final point would be uh, negative 1 comma 6. All right, good job, everybody. Uh, for those of you who want to see that again, pause the video or rewind the video, play that one again, but the rest of us, we are moving on. Okay, so um, another one. Uh, this one's just slightly different. Notice it would be easy to match the y's here, multiply the bottom by 2. But if you did that, if you multiplied the second equation times 2, you get a 2y and a 2y. If you added those, you'd get 4y. So it's clearly you would subtract. Well, what I would recommend, stay away from subtraction because that's the one you've got to change all the signs. I would recommend just multiplying the bottom by not by 2, but by negative 2. Check out what that would do. Go ahead and write this one down. So if we multiply the bottom one times negative 2, you get negative 14x minus 2y equals negative 18. Now we're adding instead of subtracting. Uh, I think you're less chance of you making a mistake if you that. You could still multiply the bottom times positive 2 and then subtract. That will still work. Um, I find this technique you make fewer mistakes. All right, let's add. Negative 14x plus 6x is negative 8x. Negative 18 plus 2 is negative 16. Therefore, x equals positive 2. Substitute that into the first equation for x. 6 times 2 is 12. Subtract 12 from both sides. 
Therefore, y equals negative 5. If you haven't caught, final answer, 2, negative 5. If you haven't caught on, this is going to be the pace of all the classes that I give. So I would hover over the pause button so that you can pause it, rewind it. Uh, I'm talking fast because simply because I want to have the shortest YouTube uh, so it's lo uh, less download time and um, it little, just makes it a little bit easier on me. Okay. Uh, remember, uh, ask me any questions in the email if you need any help. All right, last question of the day. Here's one for you. Here's one for you. Um, this is going to be question number three, box four, question number three. Go ahead, pause the video, do this one, then come back. All right, this time, Ben, what do you get? What? Oh, okay, okay. Jack, do you agree? Uh-huh. All right. Well, let's see if either one of those guys are right. All right. Um, so let's see. Let's match the X's. That means we're going to mu multiply the bottom one times negative 8. Ooh, ugly numbers this time. All right. So let's see. That would give me negative X minus 40Y equals, let's see, negative... 184. Okay, okay, big numbers. Just be careful. Add negative 40 plus uh, the x's get eliminated. Negative 40 plus 6 is negative 36. And negative 84 minus 20, negative 204. Uh, it turns out that uh, 204 is divisible by 34. So therefore, negative 34 into negative 204 goes uh, 6. Six. That's positive six. That's wrong. There's a mistake right there. That should be positive six. All right, I count. I caught my own mistake right there. Caught my own mistake. So it's a positive six right there. Okay, not a negative six. All right. So if we throw a positive six, that's wrong as well. So we throw a positive six in that equation. We get eight x plus thirty six, not negative thirty six, equals negative twenty. Let's see. Add thirty six to both sides. We would get sixteen. Well, it looks like uh, I caught my mistake right there. All right, so we're back on track here. It is 16, therefore x equals 2. Sorry for that mistake, but we made our class better for next year. So final answer, 2 comma negative 6. 2 comma negative 6. 2 comma negative 6. Okay, we good? Okay, uh, there's one big but here, and the big but is this. So what happens if you can't multiply either equation by one number to match either the x's or the y's? All right, uh, so we're going to have to multiply both equations here. So you choose, here's what you do here. See the problem? Go ahead and write this one down, please. So here's the problem. We're either going to match the x or the y's. It doesn't really matter. Let's just choose to match the y's. So we would like one to be positive and one would be the negative. So let's see, we're looking at two and three. Two and three, those are the y coefficients. What number do they both go into? Well, they go into 12. They go into, 100, or, uh, they go into 120, but how about we choose a nice friendly number like, yeah, six. So let's make one six and one negative six. Okay, make sense? So we'll multiply the top one by three and the bottom one by negative two. That's going to give me matching y values. Okay? All right. Let's see, uh, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 2y is 6y, 3 times 1 is 3, and the bottom one we get negative 8x minus 6y equals 4. Okay, uh, That way when we uh, add, we would get x, well geez, we just get x is equal to 7, that was pretty convenient. Take that value, throw it back into either equation, doesn't matter which one. Okay, uh, And let's see, 9 times 7 is 63. Subtract 63 from both sides. That's going to give us a negative 60. Therefore, y equals negative 10. Okay? Therefore, the final answer is 7, comma, negative 10. You definitely want to watch this one again. Okay? We will do one more example and then call it a day. All right. Uh, let's do this one. Write this one down. Okay, what do you want to match? The X's or the Y's? Hey, they're both the same. They're both 2's and 3's. Let's match the X's. Now, remember, our goal here is to have one positive and one negative. So we'll multiply. If we want the uh, coefficient to be 6, we're going to want the number in front of the X to be a 6 and a negative 6. So the top one make it a positive 6, the bottom one make it a negative 6. So we're going to multiply it by a 3 and a negative 2 for the bottom. All right. Let's see, 3 times 2x, 6x, minus 9y, equals negative 36. And the bottom one, 
uh, that would be what? Negative 6x plus 4y equals negative 4. Okay, cool. Notice the x's will eliminate when we add. Let's add. So we get negative 5y equals negative 40. Okay, we can see where this one goes. Therefore, y is equal to 8. Okay? Take that equation. We're going to throw it into either equation. I'm just going to choose the top one. Uh, okay, you're like, well, I thought you said to always choose the one with the smallest numbers. Just to show you that it'll work with either one. All right, uh, let y be 8. It's going to give me a negative 72. Add 72 to both sides. That gives me positive 36. Therefore, x equals 6. So final answer to solving a system of equations by elimination where we got to multiply both by a scalar, 6 comma 8. All right. I lied. Last thing of the day, remember we got to talk about uh, no solutions, infinite solutions, or one solution. Okay, so let's talk about that quickly. All right, remember this is graphically the picture. The, the lines are either going to intersect or they're the same or they're parallel lines. We've seen what it looks like for graphing. Well, this, this picture. We've seen what it looks like for substitution. Now let's see what it looks like for elimination. All right, let's see. Uh, let's match the x's. So I'll match, or I'll multiply the bottom by a scalar of negative 2. Okay, that's going to give me negative 2x minus 6y minus 18. And look what happens when we add. This is what will always happen in elimination. We're going to get something like 0 equals 0, which is a true statement. Therefore, this one has infinite solutions. What would it look like for no solutions? Okay, well, let's match the y's here. So what we have to multiply the top by, yeah, negative 2. So the top will turn into positive 4x minus 2y minus 14. And when we added those two together, we would get 0 equals negative 16. Okay? Now, that's clearly not a true statement. So this is how it will look for no solutions. Tonight for homework, you'll get a couple infinite or no solution ones. So just be ready for that. All right, so we solved a system of elimination or we solved a system of equation using elimination by scalar multiplication, and then we saw what it would look like when you have uh, infinite no solutions or one solutions. Okay, so here is your homework. Remember to email me if you have any questions. Good luck on your homework, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in class.